the EC here. Hi, guys and gals. Well, I hope you're all well. It is Monday, and Monday I usually do tags. I'm a little bit later, actually, today. It is, well, it is, what did me see? I'm, I'm up in my office. It's close to 20 past nine, and um, I was waiting to see if Jasmine was going to bring out a Monday tag, but no, it doesn't look like it. So I'll do, I'll be doing David Nicholson's tag, and Maybe later on this week we'll do another one. We'll see. So as usual, David will. Have, Dave has uh, uh, seven questions, and uh, yeah, I'm, I haven't looked at it too much. I have seen his, but it's been a few days, and I've already forgotten. I've already forgotten what it was. So there's seven questions. So let's start and see what it gives. Let me see. Question one: What makes you greet the day? What a smile. I'm reading off the computer, actually, just behind, just behind me, uh, just behind, my, actually, my, my phone. I'm, so let's see. What makes you greet the day with a smile? <laughs> oh, let me see. Some people have said, <laughs> this may give me a glass of water. Some people have said just to see that I'm alive. I, I won't say that. Because that's actually, hmm. I smile a lot, and um, I don't know, just getting up and starting a new day. Um, now, I've always had my my rituals, I was going to say my morning rituals, and uh, that, that just makes me happy. I mean, going through things that I like to read, uh, like I say, I, as most of you know, I have... I, I read in in my Bible or some in some scripture readings, and <clears throat> what usually and many years ago, um, well actually now it's been let me see in the about twelve years ago, I, I used to have a a mega commute to go to work. I would um, I would travel uh, door to door with two and a half hours. So I would leave the house. Um, I leave the house at about uh, a little, a little twenty to five in the morning, and I take a train at ten past five. But believe it or not, I love that commute. I would have podcasts. I'd listen to John uh, Denver music and everything. And believe it or not, that actually made me smile. Uh, some people said I was crazy, and you know what? I think I was. But, um, yeah, just starting out the day usually makes me smile. Yeah. Just getting up. Yeah. I guess there's, it's as simple as that, I guess. Question two. Do you choose your battles uh, wisely, or do you go into fights all the time? Or do you get into fights all the time? Well, first off, I do not get in fights all the time. I don't choose my battles because I don't do battles. It's not part of my nature. Um, when a battle, when I have to have a battle, it's being imposed on me. I don't choose battles, like I say, because they, uh, no, it's just not part of my nature. So in that sense, I don't choose them wisely because I don't choose them. And no, I don't get into fights all the time. So that's kind of a non-question. But um, there are things that are true. Is that, you know, the you know the saying, I will not die on that hill for this and that, you know. So if I'm in a debate with someone, and frankly, it is, well, take a theological debate. Um, I will not, I mean, I've known people, you know, they've gone or, you know, really mad over theology or politics or stuff like that. And I mean, I know where the, I know where the truth is. I'm sorry. If some of you will probably say no, you don't. Well, I do, but uh, but I'm not gonna, uh, you know, where there's gray areas. I am not gonna uh, die on that hill. No. Okay. Question three: What is the most embarrassing thing that you have done in public? Hmm. When I was at Oxford, um, we had, 
we would have meetings with the prof. Uh, so, so the prof once was it once a week? I'm trying to think because it was in in, in term. It was probably every two weeks in term, something like that. And um, we would be uh, asked, you know, uh, to prepare something. And the people that were there would choose someone to um, to answer the question. And I went blank. And you know, when you're in a when you're in a place where when you're in a place like Oxford where there's geniuses all around you and a-holes. <laughs> bad. There's also bad people. There's actually there's a lot of bad people. But anyway, um, you, uh, you want to look good, finally. And, you know, if you have a total blank, well, first off, you look really bad. You're an idiot in front of all these people, and it stays. That is a very embarrassing thing, and it's very hard to get out of there. Now, I don't know how many of you have watched The Big Bang Theory or Young Sheldon, but if I mean, you know what a person like Sheldon Cooper is like if you've watched those things. Well, there was a lot of these Sheldon Coopers over there, and they were pretty impressive, but not always in a good way. Okay, so, yeah. Uh, that's question three. Question four. Would you... Oh, kind of goes together. Would you rather be a genius who has a complicated life or an average thinker who takes pleasure in simple things? Well, I know a lot of people who think they're geniuses and, you know, uh, most of the time they're not. They're just uh, imbued with themselves. But, I mean, especially like I was just saying where I was before, <clears throat> there was a lot of people that were very intelligent. But there was a lot of people that thought they were very intelligent. And, you know, actually... Most people that end up saying, you know, they're a genius, usually, hmm, anyway, there's something that's missing usually. So to answer that short, I would rather be an average thinker who takes pleasure in simple things. I've worked, like I say, and I've gone to big schools and so on. And uh, before going to, to Oxford, I was, well, I was asked by, a uh, professor to uh, to also go to to MIT, you know, so it could have been really, really great in a way. The guy has actually won two Nobel Prizes in the meantime, or shared on two Nobel Prizes. So it would have been something. But, you know, going through hell, uh, no, in a real complicated life. And uh, that's another story, but uh, friends of mine that have gone through that, um, Three that did their studies with me uh, committed suicide because they were having these complicated lives. So I frankly would much rather be a person who has pleasure in simple things. But that would be another vlog. Question five. In your opinion, in your opinion, is exacting revenge ever justified? No. No. Revenge just comes back and bites you. Revenge is mine, says the Lord. <laughs> and frankly, there's a good reason for that. Um, I've seen too many bad things happen with people who take revenge. Um, but you know something? Some people get away with it in this life. Yeah. Some people do. But no, in my opinion, no, it's it's not justified. Justice is justified. Revenge is not justified. Question six. Three places you would travel. Okay, those of you who know me uh, will know my first answer, Ireland. I love Ireland. I love, love, love being there. Um, then, actually, I would like to go to New Zealand. I've always wanted to go to New Zealand. And let me see, a third place? Well, I am from I am from Canada uh, originally, and uh, uh, there are parts of Canada that I have not visited. 
but um, the fact that I've already been to Canada, I'd say no. Well, I wouldn't mind. Huh, I said New Zealand. If I was visiting New Zealand, I'd visit Australia. So I kind of kind of count those things together. Um, Ireland, I said. I wouldn't mind seeing Japan, uh, but it's like a distant third for the others. Yeah, I guess that's it. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to go to other places, but let's say I'm told three, so it'll be three. Okay, question. Oh, goodness, I went to 10 minutes. <gasps> question seven. Are you the one controlling your life or do life events control you? You know something? You don't control your life. And life events, in the sense that they control you, no. Um, but they they do give you choices. I mean, there's sometimes life events that you cannot choose. But, uh, and that, that's the thing. I mean, there's certain things in life that you will not be able to choose. But there are life events where you can choose. So that is not an easy question to answer, and you cannot answer it. Um, if you let life events control you, I mean, every life event control you, it actually means that you have loss of control of your life. Um, you can, in these situations, I mean, go to, well, I mean, many people will say you can pray. You can also actually go to uh, people that will help you and counsel you and so that the life events will not control you. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, uh, I would say that up to a point, uh, we control our life. No, we cannot really control our life, but we can help to direct it. Um, our life has been chosen for us in that respect, in many respects. Uh, that's question seven. That was question seven. So I'm going to stop there because I'm up to 12 minutes and I've got to stop. So thank you, Dave. It was a lot of interesting questions. So I'll be DC signing off. Take care, everybody, and hope you have a good week. Bye-bye.